Welcome to my channel. In previous videos, you have hopefully learned how to do all the different technical elements in butterfly swimming. In today's, we are going to cover how to combine all the elements, helping you to swim butterfly perfectly and also easily. To achieve the correct technique for butterfly swimming, it is important to do each movement at the right time. So you should do the movement of the body, arms and legs at the exact time that each movement is required. However, the time for the movements can vary slightly for each swimmer. For example, the kicks can be done a little earlier or a little later. In this video, I will talk about the standard timing of these movements that should be suitable for everyone. In one complete stroke, the swimmer will perform an arm stroke, the back movements and two kicks. Each of these technical elements was discussed in the previous butterfly lessons on my channel. If you skip something about butterfly technique, you'll find it in the previous videos. While swimming, it is important to do as few extra movements as possible. These extra movements lead to increased water resistance. Additional water resistance slows down your swimming speed. So, do only the movements that will push you forward. In the beginning of the arm stroke, your body should be stretched forward. Your legs and back are straight and close to the water surface. While doing the arm stroke, your legs are starting to move up towards the water surface to get ready to kick. Pay attention, your legs should not rise out of the water during swimming. When you move your legs up, you should continue doing the arm stroke. One very important thing to take note of. You should finish the arm stroke at the same time as performing the first kick. If you do these elements correctly, you will feel a strong speed increase. If your legs and arms perform their movements at the wrong time, the swimming won't be as efficient. The main idea of doing the end part of the arm stroke at the same time as the kick is to get the highest possible speed, swimming forwards and returning the hands forward with the least possible resistance. For example, if your legs kick earlier than needed, your arm stroke technique can suffer. But more importantly, after the arm stroke, you won't get that high speed and your hand return will be done when your speed is much slower. Imagine one boat moving at a low speed and another boat moving at a high speed. The boat which goes faster rises from the water and goes above the water. Therefore, the water resistance doesn't become a problem because the boat has the shape and position that allows it to keep the resistance as low as possible. However, the boat that goes slowly has its body sinking in the water and the water resistance is high. The same applies to swimmers. If there is no speed after the arm stroke, the body won't rise from the water, so it will be deeper in the water. The speed will immediately slow down and it will be difficult to perform the hand return. Many swimmers stay too deep in the water while swimming, which leads to difficulties in performing the movements and their speed slows down. This is why the kicks must be done when the arm stroke is being finished. After the arm stroke, you should immediately start returning your hands forward and take the breath. These two technical elements are done together. Just in the very end of the arm stroke, you should start moving your head up and as soon as your hands are out of the water, you take the breath. Straight after the breath, you should move your head down into water before the hands enter the water surface in front. When your hands enter the water, you should do the second kick, which is a bit stronger than the first one. In the video, Alexander performs the second kick a little later than what I would recommend. I suggest you to do the second kick at the same time as when your hands enter the water. His technique is correct and it works fine for him. As soon as you finish all these elements, the stroke is finished. Now we will talk about a few technique drills 
which will train you to perform the movements at the right time. Butterfly swimming on your back is a great exercise to synchronize the movements of the hands and legs. You should do the arm stroke with both hands simultaneously, while on your back. After the end of the arm stroke, you do the first kick, and then return your hands above the water to the starting position. At the moment when your hands enter the water, you should do the second kick. Don't be in a hurry and do the exercise carefully. This is another drill that will help you to synchronize your arm strokes with your kicks. First, you return your hand forward and do the kicks. Then, return the second hand and perform the kicks. Once the hands are in the forward position, you do the arm strokes with your both hands and perform the kicks. Try to remember how it feels for you and attempt to regain the feeling while swimming butterfly. Also, you can do all the drills that I've shown you previously, but you can do them focusing on performing the movements at exactly right time. Many swimmers develop their personal technique on their own. In this case, swimming may feel differently or not exactly as I explained. You might feel not comfortable when you first try to work on these technical elements or when you change your timing, as I've suggested. The main reason for this is that you're probably quite used to doing the movements in a different way or using a different rhythm. So it's very useful to make a video of your swimming to check whether or not your technique is correct. Leave your comments about how your technique feels in your own body and let me know what mistakes you think you need to fix. As you already know, smooth movements are very important in butterfly. To achieve this, you should transfer weight forward at the right moment and smoothly dive forwards in order to save the speed. In the previous lesson, you did the exercise to learn how to transfer your own weight forward during the hand return. Now we will take a look at rolling in the water. After the arm stroke, your body weight must be concentrated around the pelvis. At this moment, you should have a high speed and a high position in the water so you move forward with little resistance in the water. However, the speed slows down during the hand return, but it's very important to maintain the speed at this point. During the hand return, you should do the same back movement as in the training exercise on the land. Move your back forward and lift your legs up while returning the hands forwards. Pay attention, when you move your back forward, there is no need to flex the back, keep it straight. The movement will shift your center of gravity forward and automatically pull you forward. If your center of gravity is kept behind, you will be pulled back during the hand return. To get the correct body movement, rhythm and coordination of movements, you'll need to focus on the elements while swimming. It's a lot to think about and also it takes time. However, once you achieve it, you'll literally fly over the water surface. Now we are going to learn how to glide. Gliding is a difficult process in swimming. On the one hand, gliding is useful because it allows you to move forward using the speed gained from the arm strokes and kicks. On the other hand, the speed is decreasing during the gliding because the swimmer doesn't do any movements, so the water resistance slows the speed. While gliding, you need to feel that moment when your speed is still high but starts to decrease. At this moment, you should start doing another arm stroke so that you don't lose too much speed. The amount of decrease in gliding speed is different for every swimmer and every swimming style. Therefore, gliding time is different for everyone. In butterfly, the speed gets slowed down during the hand's return, but the second kick boosts the speed up again, so you can theoretically glide with it. However, the speed won't be high enough to glide very much. If you glide too much, your speed will slow down a lot and you'll need to start the stroke from scratch. I'm not saying that you should do arm strokes without any gliding. When your hands enter the water, you can slowly start a new arm stroke, like Alexander does in the video. In the very beginning, the water grabbing is done slowly, but then the hands start accelerating. 
having this grabbing phase of an arm stroke will allow the swimmer to glide forwards a little bit while doing the first phase of an arm stroke and also helps to maintain the speed for a new arm stroke. In butterfly, the tempo or pace depends on the distance you are swimming. The main difference of the swimming pace is the speed of a stroke. So depending on distance, only the speed of the arm stroke changes, but the technique of the movements remains the same. In a sprint, the movements are done as frequently as possible. In long distances, the movements are long similar to what Alexander is doing in the video. In the five butterfly lessons, you've learned all different technical elements of fly technique. Now you should be able to swim well, both aesthetically and efficiently, spending less energy and swim longer distances. Remember, butterfly technique is difficult and it takes time to set up the technique. I can guarantee that if you follow the tips from these videos, your technique will improve. Let me know in the comments which swimming stroke you'd like detailed videos of, backstroke, breaststroke or freestyle.